a turnaround Tuesday, everybody. Look at this dashboard. I wish my car had a dashboard like this. A trading mobile. Who needs a speedometer? If you could have been short Euro from up here, still holding it. Or short Aussie from a few weeks. Grega, lizard of waves right on my dashboard. And it could be on yours. Anyway, I'll make the same offer I did on Twitter. Okay, take the trial. There's the trial. The link is there. And 10 days for a buck, that's 10 cents a day. And if you feel like you didn't get value for your dollar by snail mail, I will refund the $1 to you. Anyone gonna do it now? So I mean, $1 is not a big risk but now it's completely riskless. I'll spend 50 cents on a stamp to send you the buck, okay? So, uh, also, what's important besides your dashboard is having the right broker, okay? So you need to get a hold of Trent and Justin at Forest Park FX. Here's an email for them. Look at all the different brokers that they have relationships with, you know, that they know the ins and out, all the strengths, weaknesses of all of them, and they're going to help you find what's the best fit for you. No law in having more than one account. Uh, U.S. citizens sometimes do that to not have the issue with FIFO. And if you're overseas, you can be reimbursed per trade to pay for your subscription here on our reimbursement program. So let's take a quick look at the market. Uh, so we have some firmness in equities. You know, I'm going to go with equities for a turnaround Tuesday because either we're going to blast and challenge this high or we should be failing pretty closely from here. Uh, big pop. I don't know if there was any real constructive news. Last night regarding uh, maybe the lira has stabilized. That could be it. Um, Euro uh, still it doesn't look like. I'd like to see one more low in Euro. Uh, as you can see here on the daily, we have confirmed. This is a four hour. We have confirmed lows. On the one hour though, um, if we had one more shot down here. 1350 or towards Gregor's levels and the Dixie get up to 97, then we might be getting closer to where we can go counter trend. On that, um, we had a little bit of a attempt at a breakout in US dollar yen last night. So uh, keeps trading around this pivot, got back above it, now back underneath it. So if the yen's going to have a bad day, and lower part of the range, but if it accelerates, maybe that's gonna have something to do with risk off coming back into it. Um, to me, this is still a potential topping formation here in the dollar, probably really goes to work once we get the turn in the dollar, but um, as from last week, both the yen, US dollar yen, and Euro USD both went down uh, with different uh, relative degrees. The euro was much weaker, but even during dollar strength last week, uh, the yen did sell off from here. Okay, so uh, metals, uh, done a few scalps in silver. Maybe if the yen comes off, that would support it. But I look at the gold and the daily is starting to hold some divergence, but the shorter term stuff like this, I don't know, it could come out of here. It's way overdue to come out of here, but uh, preferably I'd actually like to see one more shot down here, which would give me a non-confirmation. It kind of looks like a flag. Uh, but it's so oversold that, you know, I threw my, oh, my rules and scalp silver from the long side a few times. I'd like to see the similar scenario in silver, maybe one more low towards 1490. Um, you could have one hour divergence because up until today, I had to drill all the way down to 15 minute charts 
to rationalize doing anything long. As you can see, four hours still confirmed, one hour. But then you move to some shorter term time frames, and the reason I'm doing that is because the market is so oversold that at times you have to consider breaking your rules because even if it's not the low, it could be a low for a nice snapback rally. So uh, here's your 30 minute chart. If we took out 1495, I, I believe we would diverge. And the same is true in the gold here. Okay, this time if we went down say and took out the 92 low by a few bucks, we would diverge. So that's what's happening there. Um, Juan is trying to top, kind of getting the look of a little bit of a head and shoulders top. Uh, this would be uh, take some pressure off, you know, help risk and also help the gold if we could get the Chinese yuan, US dollar yuan to come down. So looking at that and uh, oil. So oil put in a pretty good day yesterday. Okay, we actually had a reversal day and we're getting some follow through here. I was looking at this oil chart and it looks a little incomplete to me unless I start the count here, but that's too far away, too stretched out. But otherwise, what do we have? We have one, we have two, what's left? I'd look to buy breaks here. What looks to be missing to you guys? I know a lot of you guys have been following um, my teachings for a long time. What do you think? Does it look incomplete to you? Yeah, see, where'd you learn that? Do you use it? Does it help you? Okay, glad to serve. All right, so uh, I believe we're gonna have the whole team coming on to the court today, uh, except Steve, I think Andre's gonna be with us. Uh, I think Greg is coming too, and Joe, Joe Perry may be with us. Uh, be great to hear from Joe and uh, you know, hear his thoughts about what's going on here. And uh, with that being said, my phone is ringing this early in the morning means I've I don't know who's calling me at this time. Anyway, um, Blake, you're around, so I could see if there's an emergency or something. Yeah, yeah, I got it, Dale. <laughs> you know what I mean when the phone rings when most people are. I, I thought me and you were the only ones up on the west part of the U.S. But yeah, I don't, I don't know who's calling. Uh, you know, my phone's off at this time of the morning. No, uh, okay. I don't care if anybody calls me, they're not getting hold of me. So uh, <laughs> 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 you. You can make it to the hospital after the close. Yeah, I mean, right? I, to, All yeah. Right. I guess I should probably pay attention because my sister's about ready to have a baby. But other than that, yes. Oh, Uncle yeah. Blake. All right, yeah. buddy. Yep, yep. I'll, I'll be back in a minute. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right. Good morning, everybody. This is uh, Blake Morrow. You're listening to the uh, the face <laughs> webinar, and uh, Dale is going to be <laughs> popping out. Uh, you know, it's been it's been a very very slow night. We had uh, we had some. The, the, the pound actually uh, pushed through 128 and right back down again. We we had employment data come out in the UK. Um, average hourly earnings came down a little bit. Uh, unemployment rate went down to its lowest levels ever, I think, uh, or, you know, uh, in this trend. Uh, most recent, it's like the, the, the lowest levels we've seen. And you can see that, um, you know, unemployment just continues to, to notch lower in the UK and so the pounds just kind of kind of flopped around a little bit we had some eurozone data come out um, ZEW numbers came in a little bit better than expected flash GDP numbers for the eurozone came in a little better than expected as well the euro has been you know pretty slow uh, and 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 I think uh, uh, as as Dale had mentioned a lot of this um, uh, stabilization that we've seen in the uh, in the FX market and maybe in in the um, 
equity markets as well is the uh, the 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 Turkish lira has also uh, stabilized. It's come off the seven uh, seven dollar level, which has allowed for risks to bounce back um, and everything else. I I tweeted something this morning, which I think is very important, is what's happening in gold, and I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about the gold market uh, for a little bit here because gold has been relentlessly under pressure. Gold has had just, it, it's been this nonstop um, bearish move. It has not, it's just been relentless. It has not, um, not been able to, to uh, uh, show any signs of life as of late. And we look like we're heading down towards 1175. I mean, that's, that's ultimately where I think we're going. And if we look at a weekly chart, uh, and you look at you look at um, gold on a weekly basis. This is a 618 retracement. Let me let me delete this for a second. Um, you can see it's a 618 retracement on you know from the from the lows that we posted in 2015, and then we have a 78 percent retracement of the move from 2016 to uh, to the highs of this last year or highs of this year rather and that comes in right at the same price and that's the 78 percent retracement so major support coming into play in gold so um I, I think that gold is going to find some support and if gold finds some support that that may end the streak that we've seen in the dollar and if you look at the dollar index the dollar has been uh, you know, obviously really strong and man, we need bad prints in this ice data. So you got to be careful with the looking at the daily charts being, you know, too, uh, too, um, uh, uh, don't try to analyze these daily charts because you see these daily candles. That's just bad. Those are bad ticks. But the dollar, um, even though we look like we're flagging here, you can see the, the dollar looks like this. What I think is going to happen is that we're going to see one more leg up in the dollar. It's going to look like a breakout. And we're going to hit, you know, maybe the 161% extension of this last move and do something like this. Is what I think is, is going to happen. We're going to do this and then we're gonna head down. So just as everybody gets bullish, the end is a bull flag formation, then we reverse. And I think this is gonna coincide with, um, you know, gold potentially making one leg lower here. So, uh, you know, that that's that's how I see the dollar index and um, and potentially what's gonna happen in gold. Now, the again, the, the dollar is, is not I'm not really too keen on 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 any other dollar pairs other than like the cable starting to show some you know stabilization down here the Aussie's still extremely weak the Kiwi it, even though holding its 161 percent extension it's still pretty weak as well the Canadian has pulled back uh, as we had a rally above 131 yesterday, we've we've pulled back. We're actually on on some trend line support. The Canadian's still kind of flopping around all over the place. Uh, the peso extended its gains to 38% retracement and pulled back from the 38% retracement. So um, you know, and I think the peso is probably going to find some support down here as well, like this. You know, for those of you that want to play the long side of the U.S. dollar Mexican peso, you know, I think uh, getting down here towards 1880 might be a place to do that. Um, the Nor the Norwegian krona, the Swedish krona, both of them. Uh, the the Norwegian krona, by the way, this is a pretty good chart. We we actually hit trend line resistance. Um, this is a multi-year trend line. We hit that yesterday, and and I think if we pull back below this uh, eight. 833 level that's going to expose some downside in the US dollar and Norwegian krona the US dollar Japanese yen I have no idea how to trade this it, it really has left me bewildered as far as what to do with it so if I don't know what to do with it I'm not doing anything with it and you know before um, uh, Andre and and now Stelios is probably going to say a few words here in a few minutes before they they come on let me talk about a few other uh, just 
cross rates that 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 I've noticed. Um, you know, speaking of the yen pairs, the euro yen had gapped down lower yesterday. We hit an 88% retracement. We bounced uh, the Aussie yen. It's you know this is threatening a breakdown, but at the same time, if the Aussie yen gets itself back above 81, this is going to end up being a false breakdown of the Aussie yen. The New Zealand yen looks bearish, but it, it, it you know as I as I wrote yesterday in the basic technical analysis of forex analytics, uh, we're at 161 percent extension. I think we're going to bounce right back to 74, and then give us an opportunity to reshort it up at these levels. The Canadian yen is just kind of messy as well. Um, let's take a real quick look at, uh, I, I want to take a look at these cryptocurrencies. You know, the amount of money that has been lost in cryptocurrencies this year is probably pretty staggering, considering the fact that, that we, that, that there's been a lot of investment, um, into the, you know, into the crypto, uh, space this year. Uh, and this last year, we've probably had a lot of, you know, a lot of institutional money has come into the crypto space. And as you can see, Bitcoin is really threatening a, a, a breakdown here. Bitcoin is is holding up better than all these other, you know, um, uh, second tier type of uh, cryptocurrencies. You can see the e Ethereum just absolutely getting destroyed. And we're approaching the, you know, 225 level, which I think is really critical support. It's 127% extension, very oversold. So um, how many of you guys, and I'm going to ask you a real quick question for those of, those of our uh, listeners that are out there. How many of you guys trade cryptocurrencies or are, uh, you, know, um, you know, trade it from time to time, um, take a stab at them? Anybody out there? Bob does not. Anybody? Anybody? Um, uh, well, some random person does that I can't see. Mark does. Um, Martin says holding some, um, but not trading. Okay, for those of you that, you know, if, if you dabble in the crypto market, I think we're getting to prices where we could at least see a bounce. I don't know if you're going to get a full-on reversal. Uh, at Natish, these, uh, Natish said he sold his house to buy Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Natish is he's joking. Natish is, uh, joking. Yes, he's joking. Um, um, he's, I thought he could live inside his coin. He's being sarcastic. He's, <laughs> he's, he's, he's that's a Singaporean um, uh, uh, sarcasm there. Yeah. Well, maybe you should sell your house anyway, because maybe it's a <laughs> real estate crash 2.0 coming. <laughs> what but, do you think? Uh, I, I do I do think that that these cryptocurrencies could find some support soon. Um, you know I'm not interested in buying any of them yet. But for those of you that trade them, if you trade them, I mean this this might be a tradable bounce here. My my fear is if you if you if you break below 200 in Ethereum, we could we could see you know a lot. We, I mean we could start to see them meltdown like the, the, this is where you start looking for capitulation type of moves is somewhere below here you know so you know you get you, you get below the you get below like this 200 level you might see it real quick and i'm just going to exaggerate this move i'm just going to exaggerate it to draw it out you might see something like this <clears throat> you know where we drop through 200 all the way through 100 capitulate and then then you can look for a, a reversal but the, the i mean those are all you know those are possibilities I am I'm, I'm not saying that you know it can't happen because it sure as hell can't I mean look at Litecoin uh, we were almost at uh, you know um, origination lows which I mean we're, we're you know, it loses another 50% of its value it's below its level Blake launch. it's yes. lighter now it's lighter now it is sorry, lighter. sorry to interrupt I don't know if you remember what that peak was that 300 and something peak in Litecoin this when it Litecoin was, the founder sold it it's the day after the Litecoin founder sold it yeah and he sold everything to and I quote uh, remove uh, concentrate high concentration of ownership and you know he didn't want to have a um, uh, how, do you, how do you say it? He didn't want to have a um, conflict of interest. That's what he said. Yeah, I mean, right. you know, call, call it whatever you want, but you know, when somebody sells everything he has from something he owns, uh, he's found it. That, that's that's trouble. Yeah, is that they call that insider selling? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 
Well, I anyway, guess there's my, my stepson called me <laughs> back then and said, Dale, you know, what, what do you think of the crypto? And da, 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 you know, uh, Bitcoin's going up. So my friends say you got to buy Litecoin because it's going to catch up. He said, what do you think? I said, only use money that you would take to Vegas to buy something. And I, I think he paid two, 240 for Litecoin. Mm -hmm. I think that's when everyone was getting in, you know, during that parabolic move in Bitcoin, people were looking for something that didn't cost as much and and now it costs a lot less. Yeah, right. Well, I guess if you yeah. loved it at 200, you got to really love it at 51. Yeah, uh, the, but the dollar cost average here. But you, you talk about like Bitcoin, for example, um, you know, here, here's Bitcoin, you know, probing the 6,000 uh, mark. I mean, r realistically, you know, the Bitcoin has been the, cryptocurrency that's been holding up so if, if bitcoin you know let's go of like let's say the 5500 handle somewhere down here you know, imagine all the stops that are trading below here so you, you know you, you break below like 5500 or you know 5700 or whatever it is i mean we could very easily see 4000 really fast and that's that, that's the type of move that will take the wind out of the entire crypto market is is seeing something like that you know, you 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 you'll you'll get a, a situation where you just get a you know big plunge lower, and then and then what happens to Ethereum and Litecoin and all the other you know IOs ICOs IOCs that have been released? I mean, the, 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 these are all real big risks, alongs in my opinion. But at the same time, if they can hold up. Uh, and not capitulate, then they might be a tradable bounce. But I think you got to be start. You, you got to start looking for like a capitulation type of move in the in the crypto uh, markets. And um, uh, real really quick before uh, uh, Stelio steps in, you, you know some of these other um, uh, big, um, uh, emerging market currencies. Did, did you guys see the czar yesterday? I mean, the South African Rand, I mean, look at this spike up and reversal yesterday, big spike up to 1550 and reversal. And, you know, if we, we get, we trade back below 14 and I don't trade the Rand, but you know, we trade back below 14 and that's, that, that's probably going to, you, you know, we'll, we'll trade back below, you know, 1350 or something like that. I think that's a, a potential. Uh, Mario says, no, I don't trade Bitcoin after I saw your videos almost a year ago. Well, that's good. Right? So, Look, you know, if you didn't make money in Bitcoin, maybe it, you save money from get buying into the hype. So um, now, Stelios, what's on what's on your what's what's on your mind today? I, there's a you know, I just saw something from the UK. I, I don't know if it's deputy finance minister or finance finance minister talking about uh, the market's got to prepare for a potential hard Brexit. Um, any any thoughts on the market right now? Yeah, he he actually said that chances of a no deal Brexit are increasing, which is kind of what the market's pricing anyway. Remember um, uh, uh, when um, was it the Treasury Secretary? I can't remember who it was who said that it was like more like sixty forty uh, in in terms of probability of a hard break, of a no deal Brexit, and the market was was clearly pricing a little bit higher than a little bit sorry less of a chance of that so it, it kind of uh, kicked the, the kicked sterling a little bit lower but you know it hasn't really been doing much today sterling so i think i think we're at the point where we're already pricing a pretty decent chance of a no deal brexit we're pricing all sorts of bad stuff for the uk i've said this before um the cpi today came in slightly weaker uh, year on year, uh, sorry, not CPI, sorry, average earnings, we've got CPI tomorrow. Average earnings, including bonus, which is the, the more important number, came in at 2.4% year on year versus 2.5 expected and 2.5 last month. Remember, CPI is at 2.5 as well. We've had, we have the tomorrow, you know, plus or minus 0.1 rounding numbers here and there. It's not a huge deal, but we are in a situation where the UK is really irrelevant what's happening in the economic environment, you know, unless we get a big change in something, you know, and unemployment is really good, you know, 4%. Growth is okay, 0.4%. I mean, it's even outperforming the, uh, actually, no, it's in line with the Eurozone. You know, it's not, it's not a terrible situation. PMIs are okay. Construction is doing okay. It's not, it's not, it's not, um, let me put it this way. It's not a situation that warrants extremely low, and emergency level rates like we have now, you know, we're still below 1%. It's not supposed to be there unless there's a big emergency in, in the country, but we still have Brexit and we have to see what kind of um, uh, deal is going to be done on that. So my view has not changed in the last few days. We're still 
waiting to see what's going to happen on that front. Um, now, the important thing is uh, the dollar. You know, we've, we've been talking about it. And it seems that on a risk of situations as we've had now with Turkey, everybody just goes and floods to the dollar. And again, this is something that, um, that's debatable. You know, I, I've, I was speaking with some friends yesterday, uh, one of my good friends who runs a fund, actually. Uh, and um, he was saying, you know, I understand why the dollar is rallying, because where else would you put your money? You know, what else do you go for? Do you go for the euro with, with the potential problems that Italy and Spain and Greece can cause? Do you go to sterling, where you don't know what's going to happen with Brexit? What do you do? You know, if you go to um, somewhere else. And, um, you know, he has a point, and, and the dollar is the easy target. But I just, you know, with things happening in the US, I'm, I'm really... I'm scared of it, you know, I'm scared of what Trump is doing, you know, his tweets, do you see today's tweet that he, he, he wrote about um, uh, that woman who got fired from the White House? I mean, yeah, her, his language, I mean, he's a president, you know, you're not supposed to be speaking like that, you know, he's, he seems so volatile and I'm really scared of what this guy can do. Uh, you know, positive or negative. <laughs> so, right. you know, I, I actually said to my friend, you know, if I was uh, looking for an alternative, I'd go to the yen. Because the yen, you know, is, is, has been undervalued for quite some time. The economy has had like a 20 year slump. And now slowly it's, it's getting, a, a, you know, a good footing and the numbers are doing well. You know, GDP surprised higher, you know, 0.5 versus 0.3. Uh, inflation is ticking up. You know, they're, it seems like they're on, on solid footing. So that's what I would choose, you know, in terms of flight to quality. Um, right. So, you know, I don't know. I know the dollar. I understand why the dollar is being bid in the last few days, but I'm I'm very scared of it. You know, I I wouldn't want to be long dollars up here. I, I must tell the truth. All right. Well, you know, the dollar index is we are approaching that uh, the 161 percent extension. We are above a 50 percent retracement. And um, Abdul asked if we got a hold of Steve. Yes, Steve uh, uh, sent us that picture from Naxo, so he is absolutely fine. Look at those beach. obliques. Go back to it. Look at his <laughs> oblique. That, that wasn't him. <laughs> that was him. <laughs> I don't think that was him. Um, right. But, uh, but um, also, Greg had mentioned that he is here. I don't know if Andre is coming on as well. Uh, I, I, but really quick, we do have some data coming out uh, here in the U.S. We have import prices. We also have uh, Canadian uh, house price index, uh, Terranet National Bank, uh, house price index also coming out very minor stuff but um but, but basically import export prices are being released here in the u.s so uh we need to have a heads up for that um but uh but grega and uh andre are both here I, well i know wow. greg is here um, yes, I'm here guys. So is andre oh. no there, there's grega speaking of which yeah. oh so I, I'm gonna, I wasn't sure I'm, Greg was going to be here today. Okay. I want to turn it over to Grega and give them both an opportunity to speak so it's not just me. Grega, thanks for being here today. Sure. My pleasure. You know, markets made some very nice volatile moves, so definitely time for some Elliott Wave updated charts for sure. Yeah, nice work on the Aussie and Euro, Grega, wizard. Thanks, man. Thanks. We will get to update. Okay. And Mike I just Blake. made Andre a panelist as well. So, uh, Greg, why don't you go ahead and take over the charts? I'll, I'll, I'll flip it over to you uh, first. And, um, and and thanks for being here. Sure. Oops. There you go. Here's the present. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon or good morning for, for those at the other side. No? <laughs> Hi, Andre. Hey, Andre. Hello. Please, please validate my audio because I'm I'm in a new room and there's a lot of. You sound people. great. It just, seems empty room. Oh, only what? screens on there. <laughs> okay. All right, go ahead, Grega. Yeah, sure. Uh, so, uh, Dale, if you recall, last time when we were online with uh, Steve, yeah, we were talking about that triangle. And exactly. I uh, highlighted that uh, triangle is probably completed because of that nice break below this trend line support. And also then we have seen a pullback into this red uh, same line, which acted as a resistance. So it looks like that we are now making a five wave move to the downside for wave five out of a triangle. Now this nice, is uh, nice entry on that, Grega. You know, I notice your style. You wait for the breakdown, and then you look for the retest for entries. That was yes. very, very well yeah. done. Exactly. 
So uh, actually, back then I was I was also a little bit cautious because, as you know, I had idea of a triangle placed in wave B of a more complex wave form. But the reason why I still took a trade on the bearish side more aggressively is because we have seen a break of that wave D swing low. Okay, so this breakout was actually confirmation for Elliott wave triangle pattern to be completed. Okay, so that was the key, this breakout. And yes, of yes. course, that trend line was uh, that was retested on a pullback was just a nice gift for those who wanted to go short at better prices. So actually this one played out very nicely and looks like that we have more uh, downside coming because we need five waves to the downside from this wave E high, right? So it means that I'm looking for potential uh, draw for another 100, maybe even 150 pips, maybe even 200 because dollar overall is very strong. So definitely be aware of more weakness coming. What I also like is that we have seen a break of below this, or I should say out of this bearish channel. And since we are below the lowest trend line of this bearish channel, this normally means an accelerated price action in wave three. So it means that we have room for more weakness and that any pullback should be corrected wave four. Okay, so uh, I'm expecting more weakness, but on the other hand, uh, looking uh, or making one step back, what we have to be aware is that we have seen a break out of a triangle. Triangles occur prior to the final move within larger cramp, which means that the e this is a final move of this larger decline that we have seen down from March highs. Okay, so now when everyone, not everyone, but that some miss the trend, now they will want to join the downtrend. But normally, they're too, uh, too late and sentiment index for euro dollar as I know uh, will be much lower. So I think that sooner or later, we should be aware of a new pullback that will take euro dollar slightly to the upside, maybe even back to this triangle pivot range. Because when the last final fifth wave is completed out of a triangle, the prices will, will try to retrace back to the triangle area. Okay, so those who want to be short, euro dollar from current levels they should be aware that downside sooner or later will be limited especially once we will be able to count five waves of decline okay got it got it so uh this so some important. guys let me ask you this greg because some guys are saying that once it's correction and it sounded like you were kind of going there that after we're done with this move down here they're counting this as a two with a three to come to the upside uh can uh, all your and others are saying yeah from uh where this first wave ends we'll rally back, back to 118 120. what's going to tell you technically i know it's down the road uh after we get a low whether or not it the, it's going to be a bear market rally to 118 120 or there's a bigger move afoot um and that the dollar could really get hammered anything what okay uh there are one question yes there are two valid wave counts okay the first valid wave count is that we have here completed a flat correction and we go back to this uh, below 2016 loss. This is my primary outlook, okay? Which means I would be expecting more downside after, as you said yourself, yeah. after this rally, okay? In three waves, then I will be looking to the downside, okay? Okay. Very aggressive yeah. line. This is one option. The second option is that this low, if I remove this, okay? And I will remove also this level. And what a greater money we have there. Uh, Rega, no. <laughs> Thank you. So actually, the second option is actually that here was a low in place already put in place for euro dollar, but still right. you would have to see more downside for A, B, C decline, right? So no matter how you look on the longer term scale, uh, we should see for the next let's say six months we should see the same pattern, new low turn to the upside for a corrective recovery, and then another decline, decline into a third leg, which could either be wave C or wave three. We don't know that, and that's why I always try to keep 
uh, more different counts on my other screen because I don't want to be too smart. Okay, I want to follow the market. So we will see what will happen, I don't know, in six months, but the okay. idea remains the same, we stay bearish, okay? But of course, my primary count, as I said, because I have to have my some primary count because, because of other correlated markets, but um, I will have no issues maybe to adjust my field to change the primary count if I will see maybe some important reversal for me here, maybe in start of 2019 or something, then I will still be able to change my views and turn to, uh, to the bullish side on the euro dollar. But uh, as it states right now, I think that we will see more weakness and that any uh, recovery on euro dollar will be corrected, either wave B or as I said, could be wave two. Okay. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Gregor. Welcome. Uh, so also we have, uh, as you know, metals are breaking down. Um, also, I think that metals could recover. I will take a look at gold. Uh, gold could recover when we have, uh, when we will see this bounce for a wave B or wave two on euro dollar. Okay. So if I take a look on gold here, what I'm actually referring to is, as you know, we have been covering gold uh, sometime, a uh, few times here, already about this triangle that is in place for a wave B. So imagine that your dollar could make a bounce, as you said, up right. in wave B or wave two, when yeah. gold will also make a wave E. But then if we see a real strong decline for a wave C here on gold, okay, wow. then we may see obviously much more stronger sell-off on euro dollar that's why my primary count is bearish and also i have been um, showing you bunt as you know i will yeah. again do this just a second uh, yes so you so you're basically uh uh you see deflationary trends stronger dollar weaker commodity prices and uh i notice you have a pip working in uh, s p so you think that maybe even uh equity markets will be affected by this strong dollar deflationary uh winds that are blowing right now yes i mean uh, as you know i'm fully technically oriented and everything how it seems right now i mean everything suggests that we will see more dollar strength as you said yourself uh, commodities are are weakening and it appears that there are there is room for more weakness especially in some of the grains market so i think that and even crude oil we have uh, which has been very very bullish uh, at the first six months of this year but i see now correction unfolding i see room for more weakness um, so there are a lot of markets actually which suggest that dollar may after all stay strong Okay, uh, so here's now this boom. Why my primary analysis of euro dollar suggests that we may see uh, a new low there is because boom may see a new high. Okay, and if I put again uh, here an overlay chart with euro dollar, okay, and you can see that actually this, uh, this, okay, so euro dollar has bottomed here in what november 2015 and we have seen our recovery right and here it was the same timing or similar timing for bunt that's seen a pullback so this was a very slow pullback as you can see so if you respect what let me remove it uh, make this down move this down just a second uh merge down okay so if you respect what bunt has been doing that each pullback has been corrected why we would look for something different now okay we have to respect what the market is doing so if each previous correction was just part of a bull trend then obviously i want to look for the same pattern to continue or again to send prices to the upside so if we respect what the euro dollar has been doing in the meantime then we obviously should expect euro dollar to reach or at least to continue lower right so that's why my primary analysis again for the euro dollar suggests that we may see a drop below uh, that 2015-2016 levels. Okay, uh, here's also a daily chart, clear ABC pullback. Okay, we have now we are now seeing a test of this upper trend line resistance. We may see some pullbacks here, maybe still when we are below this trend line, or after we see a breakout and then we see this trend line to be retested as a support. 
And here's uh, also uh, that triangle that I showed you on the four hour chart on euro dollar when we saw that retest of that trend line. Okay. Um, at the same time, what Bund did is it completed this ABC setback. Okay. So actually, when euro dollar made that pullback to that trend line resistance, okay, at the same time, I have seen Bund market trading already at 162. Which means it already bond market already confirmed the fact that euro dollar is back in downtrend because I anticipated more upside, immediate upside on bond, which said to me that euro dollar should continue to the downside also immediately. And this is exactly what has happened. And what we can see here, we have unfolding impulsive recovery here on bond. It's still not in five waves, which means euro dollar again should see more weakness coming. Okay. Great. Um, Greg, Greg, we're going to have Andre in a few minutes here. Do you have any any other instruments that you you really like or you really want to talk about, or uh, before we switch on to him? Also, yes, I will also uh, look at Aussie okay. because we covered PIP in Aussie. Uh, as you know, I've been looking for a triangle here. Now the first triangle measurement, uh, which is actually a target for fifth wave. The first one has already been reached here. So I took the distance of this lag, wave A, measured it from end of a wave E, so it was hit here. But because I can see Aussie very bearish across the board, I would not be surprised if we see any, uh, even lower prices here to extend towards second uh, target of this triangle measurement, which is uh, measured from a breakout point. Okay, So I would remain bearish on Aussie, but again, we went out of a triangle. So once we see a turn, which I believe will show up uh, in the second part of August, we should not be surprised, okay? Because the reversal to the upside will come. But on the short term here is hourly chart. There you can see a, a new triangle on hourly chart, which again suggests at least one leg, uh, one push lower. Also, as is correlated with silver as well. So let me just take a look at silver. Stelios will close his eyes now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so silver went also out of a triangle. I don't see a completed five wave decline here yet from this wave here, which means again there is room for more downside, maybe towards 1475. Uh, and once we see which, uh, once we see prices reaching the new low, I think we should be aware of potential bounce because five waves was uh, put a uh, correction in place which means at least three way rally. okay um, also very quick outlook uh, on pound yen uh, i have been also talking about this with steve so on pound yen what i have been looking for is um, a decline in five waves after completed abc correction now as you can see here uh let me just update this it's still not a five wave move lower okay it was wave one two and you can see a nice extended lag to the downside right into 161.8 percent extension of wave one measured from end of wave two which is the most important typical target for wave three okay so now i think that we are in a wave for pullback now in such case you would watch out for 38.2 percent retracement uh so this one comes in right now this is very significant right around 143 which was also this previous low okay and as you know when, yes when important low is broken if this low is retested i think it can be another opportunity maybe to join this downtrend especially if we consider that we would be also in a way four here okay so um also i would watch out for this and this was what 200 pip pullback so far, we already made 220 pips of pullback, but wave four sometimes can be more complex or maybe at least more deeper in price compared to wave two. So I would not be surprised if we see these uh, levels, as I said, to retest it around 143. But I would not love to see uh, a break above this upper trend line. If this would happen, then I think that this is not the wave four anymore. And that would suggest that after all we have a low in place. Okay. And, and so, Zayda, let me let me just interrupt you because I need, I have a question there. So it, it is possible to that point being formed at the at the, the high trend line of the channel. 
uh, it, it it will invalidate that that point that that wave four. Yeah, if we reach or if prices would break above this trend line, then mm -hmm. it, the previous uh, the previous structure support no. Yes, but it would not the real invalidation. Okay, mm -hmm. would be here at one. Okay. Okay. 145 because it was a swing low of this previous correction but okay. uh, the, the fact is that i would because of the guide lines there are some yeah. there is difference between guidelines and rules the rule is that wave four must not trade in territory of wave one yeah. but guidelines which means personality of each wave should also be mm -hmm. considered Normally, wave four will not retrace more than 61.8 percent. Yeah, and this also comes in around this trend line. So, to, mm -hmm. for me to stay bearish, I definitely want to see these prices to trading below these levels. If we see a spike higher, and even if we don't see an overlap, immediate overlap with 145.10, I still think that this would probably decrease uh, possibilities yeah. for another low, okay. and I would not be looking for short because the overall price action or activity of this or structure of this mm -hmm. five wave decline would not be looking with the best shape i guess so yeah. Yeah. Okay, do we have great. any questions Davis, Stelius, do we have any questions um uh, somebody's asking for uh, sterling cad if you if you want to have a look at that just before um, um no, take take your time, still use. I'm 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 comfortable. No, no problem. Okay. I mean, we got we got 13 minutes until the interview, so. You know. so yeah, I, I can I can just show you one or two charts. No, no problem at all. Okay, no problem. Okay, so if you can cover the uh, Sterling CAD and then we'll switch over to Andre, please, Gregor. Yes. Okay. Sure. So pound CAD, uh, basic. I mean, if you are familiar with the Elliott wave techniques, then clearly you see in first. 10 seconds, which is probably the most important to identify the right pattern, you see it bearish. Okay, we have seen a very strong decline, and then we have seen only a pre-wave recovery. Also, this can be considered as a seven leg recovery in seven swings, but still it's a correction. Okay, so uh, I see market in bearish mode. I would be expecting more weakness. So if we level this really quick, one, two, this would be probably an extended wave three, four, wave five. And now I think uh, that this was a corrective recovery and more importantly we have seen a very nice push to the downside I think that this could actually be now way free so uh, because when a correction is completed you would expect prices to retrace back to these levels so I would stay bearish here and would be watching out for a drop let me look at 161.8% this is around 1.55 level okay so if we see especially if we see a break below this lower trend line support i have been talking about this a lot about this technique then this would be another confirmation that we are in a way free because this is something what you want to see in a way free accelerating an extended price move in a short period of time okay so clearly i think that Pound cat is bearish and could see more weakness ahead. Okay. Great, thank you, thank you, Greg. And you know, we, uh, from what I understand, you're going to be here tomorrow as well, probably. So you know, we have a few other questions. We can have a look at those tomorrow. No problem. Yes, sir. no problem. I will be tomorrow, maybe even on Thursday. So I will be around then. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So Andre, actually, yes. hold on. Let me. Thank you, Greg. Thank Good you, Greg. Hunting. Good hunting, brother. Nice shots, man. Hi, Andre. Hello, Mr. Dale. How are you? Good, buddy. You see any butterflies or crabs? I just uh, passed you the screen, by the way. A, a few, a few of them, yeah. Uh, do you see any not, sharks? Great white sharks? Very, not, not, not strongly convinced, but uh, a few of them. So, uh, where to start with? So, taking, taking, taking Greg uh, last chart. This is cable versus CAV and, and 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 considering last last 
Greg uh, approach. I, I also see this uh, as a bearish momentum or a bearish trend continuation. We are below the 200 media average. We are now retesting the 618 um, fib retracement. Symmetrical behavior um, as a, a three wave structure, symmetrical behavior will put the price above the 78% retracement, synced with this previous small structure support and retesting the lows, as Greg has mentioned. I will not be surprised to see a bounce here, forging the bad pattern, and then a new, a new, a new low. Um, but uh, assuming this as a bearish trend continuation, people should, uh, at least uh, most of the traders are searching for trend continuation setups, and eventually they will avoid those those trades and they, they will try to engage the market in a bearish direction um well as, as, as soon as the market provide provide them that that opportunity so um that that is my view for pound versus versus cad and um, let me sh let me push dollar index because we, we are approaching a very interesting zone here um and let me let me show you my view on a weekly chart for 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 dollars so we are now breaking uh, the previous the previous structure support uh, the previous structure resistance uh, we are trading above these highs and above those and when i search for harmonics uh, I tend to wait for this breakout of this structure in order to 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 start to project uh, the next eventual harmonics above. So the first one, um, it's it's it will push the price at 161.8. It it will be synced with previous structure resistance and support zone, um, and that can offer the tra a, a trader uh, a friendly risk reward in order to to remain below the previous the previous highs um but uh, this is a weekly chart uh, and let me let me jump into into a four hours time frame because we are act actually approaching that that um, not a shark pattern dale but it's it's um, a crab pattern and um, and what is a crab exactly it's it's nothing more than a failed a failed bad pattern at 88% retracement. So we have here the price actually um, felt some some pressure there. It has provided uh, uh, at least in a four hours time frame some bearish momentum to trade, um, and then uh, violated the previous structure resistance. And when the, the bad fails as a as a reversal. And sorry, as, uh, when the bat fails as a reversal, we tend to search for an extension above those highs. So I, I will extend this wave, this X um, A wave above, and I will search for uh, the 618 extension from this wave. Uh, and that will print me the crab pattern at 1618, that will be at 9662. Um, usually, uh, we the crab will search for the a retracement at the FIB levels, uh, the 38% retracement, as you can see at, at 95.65, will put the price exactly retesting the highs uh, and the starting formation of the harmonic, of, for, for the harmonic. So the, the harmonic has started here, and the target for the crab will retest that previous structure resistance. Um, and those are types of confluence that I search for not only to, to validate the harmonic because the harmonic will validate as soon as the price achieves that level. So as soon as the price touches the 161.8, the pattern is completed. We never know if the pattern will, will, will shift targets or not. There, there are other indicators that we can search for that we can use uh, in order to validate that probability or to increase that probability. We have no um, we have no bearish divergence between MACD and RSI and, and previous structure highs, um, which suggests more bullish trend continuation. So careful with those levels because we can see uh, dollar strength um, increase 
um, in order to create later uh, a divergent, uh, divergent uh, price action um, uh, with, with, with MACD and RSI. Um, and those are the two indicators that I use um, to search for divergence. So, and to finish, and because uh, I, I have five minutes, um, and let me show you um, German DAX. I, I know that you do, uh, you like to, I, I, I believe you like to, to watch everything, but um, this is a four hour time frame chart. And I have a weekly time frame chart, the time frame chart published um, inside Forex Analytics for those who are subscribing our services. Uh, you have a weekly chart there, and uh, from from this double bottom formation, I was expecting the formation of a huge or a, a higher degree right shoulder. So this is our right shoulder, um, and uh, actually this is our right shoulder here. Let me try to change this. I need to change into um, a higher time frame in order to get that a clear a clear idea. Dale, I don't know if you need to interrupt. Actually, it was not uh, the, the, not not this double bottom, but at, at this uh, this was a, a three drives, uh, Dale. Yeah, there's a that 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 was a three drives pattern that we we were actually following uh, during the the formation of that pattern. Uh, for those who are subscribing, uh, I believe you are you are familiar with that with that pattern there, uh, and we are we were also expecting um, the, the this bullish momentum from from this from these lows. So from here, I was expecting the formation of the right shoulder. Uh, so I have here my left shoulder formation, the the neck zone, the head, the reinforcement of the previous support, the neck with the three drives and the formation of the the right shoulder. So ultimately we will see a breakout of the neck and retest of this 200 media average uh, on a weekly time frame. It, it can take I some, use, some uh, time. I use head and shoulders shampoo. No. <laughs> Eventually, leaning for, no. for my <laughs> for my dandruff for my trading dandruff, buddy. No, 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 All no, right. no, no, no. All right, I try it. I, I can, I can try. I, I, I can, I can. I will let you know let, later. <laughs> the, 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 Okay, but, buddy. You, you can tell you yeah. gel afterwards, but <laughs> yeah. you, go ahead. No, no, I use I use I use a, a very short uh, air cut, so so I don't I don't I don't need special special shampoos no <laughs> but okay this is this was the 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 head and shoulder formation and in a, in a four hours time frame we are trading uh, we are trading what i call a crucial level or, or a decision a decision point so let me try to i don't know why this is all okay uh, i published this chart uh, uh, inside Forex Analytics. This is a, another um, uh, edge and shoulder formation and we are now trading a symmetrical behavior, uh, a three-wave symmetrical behavior. So we are now facing the 161.8, uh, another crap pattern at 161.8, previous structure resistance. This was the next zone for this double bottom formation. So we are now retesting that that price, that exact price again. So the price is rejecting to close below the close price of that next zone. Okay, and I like to to pay attention to to those small details. So I see the price rejecting one, two, three, four, five, six six candles in a row, rejecting to close below this this specific price at 161.8, and at the formation of this bullish crap pattern and uh, uh, an ABCD uh, or uh, ABCD symmetrical behavior. So note that the price has already reacted from there. So that we, 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 have, we have seen already a fast candle, almost retesting the 38% retracement, but I see I can use those, those harmonics as potential um, reversals and, and, and for, for strong bounces um, on price. So 
we have two situations here. We are approaching um, breaking this double bottom. We'll hit test that weekly, uh, that weekly three drives bottom, the, 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 the next zone for the major or higher degree edge and shoulder information, uh, breaking these lows. Um, and obviously uh, breaking the breaking this structure, this, uh, there's there's a specific trend line here. We can use a specific trend line uh, as a resistance, and breaking that that price structure uh, eventually will force the price to retest the highs and to trade even even higher eventually. But tension, this this momentum here, um, I see no no big. Um, bulls inside this 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 momentum here i can i can actually this this symmetrical behavior can fail the pattern can fail and they will search for the default projection for the edge and shoulder formation so that one default projection below will put the price at 12 uh, 105 so retesting the double bottom and uh, eventually trading even lower okay so this is my my two cents for today. Great looks. Yeah. Great looks today, Andre. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andre. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you, Greg and Blake and uh, have a nice, have a nice trading week. What, what a team. The dream team. team. <laughs> indeed, indeed. It's, it's a yeah. pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to listen to you, uh, all of you, Greg, uh, Dale, Blake, Stelius. I, I, I'm not a fundamental trader, but when I when I start to listen to Stelius and, and and, and Steve talking about uh, the, the fundamental approach. I, I stay clued to, into, into, my, into my monitor because it's, it's a pleasure to, to listen to you and, and to try to understand and to, to create some, some, let's say, some, some confluence between my, my, my technical approach based on harmonics with your, your fundamental approach. It's very interesting to have that. Well, yeah, they're great. They're great. Yeah. And if you want to hear about some fundamentals in equities and uh, those types of instruments, stay mm -hmm. tuned for this interview with Lance Roberts. Uh, Lance, how are you? I will. I will. Uh, Lance, Lance, I'm making you the presenter. Looking forward to meeting you, hearing your voice, and seeing your screen. There we go. Um, I'm just curious what screen you're looking at right now. I'm looking at uh, real investment advice, Perfect. so all the okay. articles you have up there, Lance. So great to meet you. Thank you so much for coming here and uh, giving us some of your time today. No, oh, absolutely. I'm happy to do it. I believe I interviewed one of your associates up there, Michael Leibovitz. Uh, it was an excellent interview. And uh, I've been following your work uh, for a while on Twitter, and I go to your website and uh, I'm impressed with the content. I think content's uh, very important nowadays, but I'd like to take you back in a time machine, Lance. So sure. uh, let's go back to right before you um, had an entree into the industry. How did it happen for you? Uh, that was 1987. Um, I actually started working for, for a, a bank. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and better than that, it was three days before Black Monday. So I actually graduated college. And I went to work for a bank in uh, <laughs> Austin, Texas, managing their treasury book. Uh, three days later, after I start the market crashes, my boss has me entirely convinced the entire crash is my fault. So and that's wow. the way I got started. Yeah. You know, it, I think in the Wolf of Wall Street, the same thing happened to Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio. Uh, he, you know, he had just gotten his series seven. And then, you know, a week later, uh, he was fired, and exactly. ended up, and that began his great career as a penny stock whore. All right, he well, became a penny stock whore. Well, here's an interesting story, though. I was actually so that happened. You know, all that part of Wolf of Wall Street happened right before the dot com crash in 2000. And when at the beginning of that movie, when they're trying to take that one company public. Um, that was all real time. We were watching yeah. that, you know, real time. Michael when I was Madden. Yeah, Michael exactly. Madden Michael right. Madden. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, that whole that whole story when you watch that movie is a big flashback for me. So yeah, yeah. Well, for me, it's Trading Places because I'm older than you, and uh, <laughs> and I and I used to work on the floor, and I know that a lot of guys did 
um, take a lot of different substances <laughs> when they went into the bathroom, mainly for ulcers. But sure, of course. Uh, so okay, so after that, what happened? Well, no. Uh, so, and actually, I spent about uh, ten years working overseas. I uh, spent quite a few years working for several different banks and doing a lot of uh, real estate transactions and money management for high net worth individuals, primarily out of France, that uh, needed offshore money management. And then in 1998, came back to the states, opened a broker dealer to uh, continue operations. And then in 2000, saw the transition occurring uh, after the dot com crash. Uh, we had, we had started talking about the the coming crash of stocks in 19, late 1999, early 2000. We were warning people get out of the market. Um, and then after that trend, after that occurred, and of course this was the initial advent. Uh, back then I was uh, starting on a radio station doing a, a financial radio show, and there was a guy on the afternoons, and he was talking about you know fire your broker just buy ETFs. Well, there were only three ETFs at the time: it was diamonds. Q's and and spiders. That was it. Uh, right. But he was he was very early on that whole ETF curve of you know lower rates, lower uh, commission costs, etc. And so we transitioned our whole business into a very early adopter of the registered investment advisory flat money management fee. We were at one percent. We well, and we were at one percent then. And the average fee at that time was two to two and a half. Believe it or not. Right. And and but we. Now you now you have to pay somebody to manage. Uh, yeah, Almost, yeah, and, right? and so not only did they catch up to us at one percent, we're now managing money for between 0.5 and 0.75. So I mean, um, you know the the but here's the, the interesting baton part of death march of uh, the retail industry. Well, th you say that, and uh, let me tell you what happened in 2008. Um, in 2000, late 2007, I was writing articles about the coming, you know, bear market and the crash because of the real estate, the leverage, the uh, the stuff, the margin debt that was in the markets. Um, in February of 2000. Uh, nine, I wrote an article called Eight Reasons for a Bull Market, and we started allocating money back into the markets at that point. Um, Beautiful. And, and I, well, I actually lost clients because everybody was convinced that the market was going to zero. Um, but so, but what, what, uh, what was interesting is that actually when the market came back around the realization that good financial advice is actually worth paying for, fees actually went up momentarily. And then, of course, this advent, this big push into ETFs is now pressing fees down again. In the next crash, when it occurs, um, robo-advisors will go the way of the dodo bird and fees for advisors will come back up somewhat. Not to a great degree, but they will come up somewhat. Okay. So uh, you talk about those two previous experiences and uh, going to an RIA model and I think that's really what was behind people wanting to become self-directed. Uh, mm -hmm. They, you know, they saw, you know, their broker, and that's what I respect about uh, your work. Uh, you're not a passive RIA type. Um, that's correct. You make you make moves, okay? And uh, but most, uh, you know, financial advisors, CFPs, whatever, they thought they were okay with the standard. Diversification: 70% stocks, 20% bonds, 10% cash, and people found out not once but twice that they weren't to, uh, that you know they were wrong on everything and wouldn't even open their statements for a while. So they decided, you know what, I'm going to learn how to trade. Do you right. think that was what was behind people wanting to become self-directed? Two, two, two things. Um, if we saw this in 1999, you'll remember that uh, day trading, oh, the yeah. day trading shops had opened up everywhere. And of course, when the market <laughs> crashed, there was that shooting at the the one in Atlanta, I believe. They became um, position uh, traders. Yeah, exactly. And of course, they were doing it heavily long. I had a I had a, a woman come in my office in 2000. And she wanted me to help her fix her situation. Her problem was she was $250,000 in credit card debt. She had put it all into SDLI, JVS Uniphase, and a bunch of other stocks that went basically to zero. Um, so, you know, we saw that same mentality back then of turning Wall Street into a casino for, for quick money gains. Um, we saw the same thing in 2007, early 2008, and we see a lot of the same thing now. 
uh, I am all for people managing their own money. In fact, we're real investment advice. We're just in the final throws here. We're launching RA Pro, which actually uh, I was listening to the to the interview earlier. Very fascinating on the technical positioning. I caught I was kind of in late, but I was listening to his positioning on the DAX, and then yeah. he was talking about you know how he likes to listen to the fundamentals. Well, I'm very much a fundamental investor, and we manage money from a fundamental basis. So we look at valuations. We look at these type of things. I just wrote an article last week uh, talking about marrying, though, the fundamental analysis with the technical overlays because fundamentals are great, but what happens with fundamentals is they're very slow to turn. And of course, when you're in late stage markets like we are now, people start poo-pooing the idea of Cape valuations and and these type of issues. And it, But it is at those moments where we start discounting the value of fundamentals and the fact that we're paying for a future stream of cash flows that we should start paying attention to these things. Here's a chart of the, uh, uh, this is basically the the real inflation adjusted S and P 500. Is this large enough for you, or do I need to make it a little bit bigger? Does that help? That's better. Yes. Okay. Um, so this is ba the the top chart is the real inflation adjusted S and P 500. The bottom is is Cape valuations. Um, when the market has ever been above 23 to 25 times Cape, you have had very long periods of very low rates of return, and so so when you start talking about marrying some of these ideas together and and talking about applying a technical overlay that's what this does here is simply looking at the same graph but whenever the 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 uh, market goes below the 24 month moving average and you see this over 100 years there's not a whole lot of trades here but right. it kept you out of the financial markets when you went through these very long periods of underperformance and and under uh, and overvaluation of the markets we are very much in a period now at 31 32 times earnings and by the way we're still carrying 31 32 times earnings despite a surge in and underlying earnings because of tax cuts you know, but we're in a period where we're going to see another major, uh, uh, you know, decade or more of very low rates of return, and investors are unwilling to understand that. Uh, How far away are we from that 200? Uh, or uh, whatever. You're right. Right now, you're still a pretty good distance away. So just on a, a normal reversionary market, we're probably 12 months out from, uh, you know, potentially a, a trading signal to the negative. Okay. Okay, so you uh, uh, point-wise, uh, do you use it on the S and P, uh, or only the inflation-adjusted S and P? Um, you can use it on either, but this, but for the purposes of long-term analysis, we use inflation-adjusted. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you think we're okay for 12 months? Uh, uh, any in, uh, intermittent type of shakeout that could happen? I mean, the markets are pretty thin here oh, right sure. now, Lance. Uh, we could have a bear raid and clean out the lows of January, February, and then skyrocket again. Yeah, absolutely. Look, we're moving into the two weakest months of the year, which is August and September. So we've got issues with Turkey. It's amazing how quickly, though, we dismiss these things in the markets. But that's very much a hallmark of uh, of, of a very overly complacent uh, bullish market where we just quickly discount the issues of, of what's happening globally. But this issue with Turkey, and I had this chart in last weekend's newsletter, is something that, that really – we, sh we shouldn't discount too terribly much because the difference between today and what we saw back in uh, you talk about the Thai bot now 97 well not only that but we, we have a big difference between where we were in yes and 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 what was happening in Turkey so what this chart shows you is the uh, financial crisis back in 2008 you see seven and eight you see where the feds lowering interest rates that's the green bar um, right. so so you, you see the Fed interest rates going to zero. You see the surge in the underlying Fed balance sheet, and you see all the problems with Greece that we went through along the way. And every time we had a sell-off because of, of a chart. crisis or whatever, yeah. the Federal Reserve was there liquefying markets, suppressing rates. We have Turkey going on right now, which is uh, is, is magnitudes larger than Greece in terms of its global impact. 
at a time when you have liquidity being extracted and the Fed raising interest rates, and the markets are completely discounting that. So I think there's a real possibility that somebody wakes up, to, you know, not literally tomorrow morning, but tomorrow morning, and we could see this market down sharply on some type of, uh, of credit contagion that runs through this market. And again, if you go back through history and look at any period where there's been a financial crisis of some sort, it is always directly related back to some sort of uh, financial crisis generally driven by credit. Here's a chart of the 10-year treasury rate going back to 1970. And at every point, you had a spike in rates uh, combined with a spike in the dollar. You wound up with some type of financial crisis, and we're running in that same mix right now. So that, that's what I love about your stuff. What's your account minimum uh, for your RIA? Um, we, we, we really don't have a minimum. What we work with is people that really really are serious about managing money long-term. We, we're pretty selective about interviewing our clients when they're interviewing okay. us to, to have the right mix. Okay, so you, you probably wouldn't want me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, probably. Yeah, I'd call, yeah, I'd call and ask too many questions. No, I, you know, I believe in uh, uh, leaving it alone. And I, I'd, I'd like to say that to anyone who would consider Lance as an RIA or a hedge fund or anything, Lance, I believe that you know people really don't give things enough time to make mm -hmm. real good assessments. Uh, what would you say somebody should give you in the amount of time to uh, have an understanding of what your performance would be? A year before they make any judgment or sooner? Hey, Dale, I'm sorry, I lost you there real quick. Can you okay, say, can you hear me? Yes, I'm can sorry. You, yeah, uh, okay. All right, you know, people try and make judgments, uh, you know, the, in this business, uh, especially in the spec end of it, in commodities and FX, you're only as good as your last trade. But uh, when you're managing people's uh, nest egg, how much time do you think is appropriate for people to make a good assessment on any money manager or RIA, about a year? Now, here's the way we that we we were, we spend a lot of time with our clients, and and the issue is that in any given year, you hear this argument all the time is like, well, 95 90 percent of money managers unperform their index, uh, you know, from one year yeah. to the next, and and that's true because the big difference between the S and P 500 is and a, and a money manager is the S and P 500 pays no taxes, holds no cash, has no trading fees, uh, you know, is not of impacted. By a variety of issues that impact your personal portfolio, um, but also benefits from things like share buybacks and share distributions, those type of things. So the index has a tremendous, and also one of the important things is share is uh, stock substitution. So in other words, GM goes to zero when it goes bankrupt, they swap it out for another stock, and magically the 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 portfolio or the index rebalances. Yeah, the Dow is famous for that. Uh, yeah, you know, it, yeah. Go ahead. It, it, Exactly. And your portfolio doesn't work that way. So there's a lot of reasons why benchmarking to an index is not a great idea, but it is important as a tracking method about how you're doing. So what we do is we really spend a lot of our time counseling with clients and working with them. Look, you should approach your portfolio with your advisor as a business, right? So Dale, you and I, we're partners in a business, right? We're going to run a, a trading firm or whatever you want, whatever kind of business you want to run. Well, as we engage in that business, we work over the year and we say, you know what, sales aren't where they're supposed to be. So Dale, what do we need to do? We sit down, we restructure our market plan, marketing plan, we throw some dollars at it, and we relaunch our marketing plan to increase our sales. So we tweak our plan as we go along. And this is the important thing about working with any advisor, which is you should have a very good communication base with your advisor that says, as partners in this business, the portfolio is the business, we're the board of directors, what, what's going on here? Are you contributing to the plan as the money manager, you know, managing the assets? You monitor this on a regular basis. And Great when you're analogy. Off, and when you're, off, when you're off track, you make adjustments to get back on track. And this will allow you to inure value in your portfolio over the long term. And we are, just like you, Dale, while we use technical analysis to understand what the risk is in the short term, we are long-term fundamental investors. We use the technical analysis to avoid the risk in the short term of, of, of not only just capital loss, but also emotional loss. The, the biggest the, the biggest Im negative impact to portfolios over time is investors themselves as their emotions drive 
positioning changes, et cetera, and, and portfolios that shouldn't be done, but it's that emotional drag that hits it. Let me ask you this, with the chart that you've shown, in real time, are you sitting on a, a fair amount of cash looking for the, that event risk to take uh, the market lower for uh, your, perhaps you have a shopping list if the market gets hit 10% or so that would be attractive to you? Yeah, no, we, we're right now, uh, actually, back in January of this year, uh, as the markets were running up to its peak, we actually reduced our portfolio allocations to about 75% exposure. So in other words, in a 60-40 allocation, model, um, we reduced the equity allocations to 45%. During this uh, bottoming process in March and April and, and, and this rally back, each week in our newsletter, we've been talking about increasing our exposure. We've been buying in on dips as they've occurred. Uh, so right now, we're about 55% exposed to the market. Mm -hmm. We're still a little bit of cash, um, but we do have some hedges in place. And if this market breaks below 2,800, uh, we'll begin take raising some more cash within portfolios. But okay, well, how do you hedge? Um, we hedge through uh, several different methods. One, cash is always the best hedge to start with. Whenever okay. there's a whenever there's a concern about the markets, people tend to make an emotional decision, so they go short the market. Well, the problem is, is when you move from a long position to a short position, if the portfolio, if the market reverses very sharply, which we've seen a lot over the course of the last few years, particularly with Fed interventions, then you wind up moving from a losing position to a losing position. So the best first step for any trader is to immediately move to cash. Cash doesn't lose value and it gives you time to evaluate what you do next. So you can you can monitor the markets, you can say, okay, the market is in fact going through a correction, now I can short, or that was a one or two day head fake, and we've seen that so many times here, that you know we, we get some type of announcement from the Fed or Bullard shows up and says, hey, don't worry about it, lower for longer, and this market turns right around and runs right back to new highs. Well, cash Cash allows me the ability to buy back in a long side if I need to. So our first step is always to move to cash. Second thing is, is that whenever there's a market route, money moves into treasury. So we'll also okay, add bonds. to our treasury. Bonds always are a good hedge. And, and now, not corporate, do not dot do junk, et cetera. But Just treasuries, blue chips and, may, and cash and T-bills, 90-day T-bills, not that yeah, much different. Those are, yeah, uh, those, no, they're not. So uh, what, what do you think of the bond market here? I, I think the most accepted narrative over the last 12 months is that rates are going up and the bonds have entered a long-term bear market. That, uh, that, that is action, very, you that's believe, very Do you agree with that? No. <laughs> and I, I, look, I've written tons of articles on this, but um, the issue is simply this, is that now we're talking about treasury specifically, okay? Right. Not, yeah. not corporate bonds. We're not talking about- No, there's a bonds. huge bubble in corporates, right? Exactly. So All we're right. talking about treasuries. This is this is where money flows to whenever there's world trouble, right? So- You know, you're more like a commodity uh, FX guy. You're looking at commitment of traders reports, uh, your charts. Yeah. You're, I, I lost I, you. you're a trader. You, back. you lost me? You lost me? I'm I sorry, Dale. You. Okay. Uh, I'm back. You, okay, you're more like uh, you have a trader's instinct, Lance. Well, it, no, it's it's called thirty. It's called thirty plus years of watching this stuff. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. And, and, I mean, and, and, you, you watch stuff that traders watch. Right. A lot of and, commitment of traders, et cetera. Sure. And the reason you watch this is is because in the long term, again, it's fundamentals that matter. In the short term, and when people are talking about, well, rates have only one way to go but up, well, you have to look at the what drives interest rates. What drives interest rates is economic growth, inflation, and wages. Wages aren't rising. Economic growth is still plugging along at two, two and a half percent. And interest rates and inflation remain fairly well t contained around two, two and a half percent. So when you add all that up, where should interest rates be? Two, two and a half percent. Where are we? About two and a half percent. So it's in, or, in order for interest rates to go substantially higher, you've got to have an increase in the economic prosperity of the country. And there is nothing on the horizon that suggests that economic prosperity is about to come surging back in this country. We no longer manufacture, we no longer produce. Productivity is a historic lows um, because of the shift from a manufacturing base that we lived in back in the 60s and 70s 
to a debt-driven accumulation cycle beginning in the 1980s, which is only seen inflation, interest rates, and debt, uh, sorry, uh, economic growth on the decline because the more debt you contain, the less economic growth you're going to get because of the interest service required. And we've increased debt in households yeah. by over 40, by almost 70% since 2009. And that's simply you're going to hit the next recessionary cycle. Money's going to flow into bonds for safety. And you're going to see when, when these short positions, which are the greatest level on record right now, reverse. And as you can see in this chart, what I've done is I've stripped out any net positioning that was less than 100,000 contracts. And what you'll notice is that every time you have this type of net positioning, this is generally a peak in rates, not yeah. the beginning and, of and a this is, beginning of And this is uh, the biggest yes. the red, yeah, uh, record net short position. That's by correct. commercials? Yes. Oh, no, by spec, by uh, speculators. Yeah, yeah, this okay. is hedges, hedge funds, et cetera. You know, Lance, it was great to meet you. I'm glad I was persistent. Yeah. And uh, having you come on, and uh, you're my trading warrior brother now. So, what's the best <laughs> way? What's the best way for people to get a hold of you if they want to talk to you about their retirement funds or you know cash funds for you to manage? Sure. No. Best thing. Best thing to do is go by our website, realinvestmentadvice.com. Um, you can ask uh, ask questions. You can subscribe. I, I certainly encourage you to subscribe to our newsletter. Um, this is a great way to learn more about how we view the markets and and how we do things. This is last week's newsletter, talking about this whole Turkey crisis right now. The nice. newsletter the newsletter goes through a variety of fundamentals things, and then we also do a complete positioning review on how we're positioning accounts. Uh, we even have a plan manager for 401k plans that we provide every week. So it's a great way to learn about us and also just to help you manage your money better using our points of view. What a great resource. Thank you so much, Lance. Good hunting Thanks. to you and to all your clients. You know, I hope that uh, profits rain down on you guys, no matter what the weather is. So, Thanks. <laughs> all right, <laughs> Thank buddy. Appreciate all right. it. All right, everyone. That's Lance Roberts. You can follow him on Twitter as well, at Lance Roberts. That's a wrap. See everyone for Wednesday session. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. See everyone tomorrow. Good hunting. Adios. Thanks again, Lance.